All right, today we're taking on the surface area and the volume of cylinders. So first up, just a little vocabulary. So first up, we're saying that a cylinder is a type of solid. Okay, I'm not calling it a polyhedron because it's not a polyhedron. It is a type of solid. Let me just emphasize that right here. So not a polyhedron. And that's really because we, we don't have all faces that are polygons. We have some circular faces here. Okay, we have two parallel and congruent circular bases. Okay, a cylinder most closely resembles the prism except the bases are circles and not polygons. So again, that's what makes it not a polyhedron. We do not have all polygonal faces. We have our curved circular bases. So if the axis, and let me just draw in my model what the axis is, it would connect the center of the top base to the center of the bottom base, just like that. So if that axis, let me just label it first, if that axis is going to be perpendicular to the base, then it's right. And if the axis is not perpendicular to the bases, then it's oblique. And in this class, we really focus on the right cylinders. Oblique, we saw that with the prism. We know that that gives it that slanted appearance. So in this class, we're going to focus on just the right type of cylinder. So let me label my features first. So in my model, that is my axis. I already have that labeled. It's connecting my top base to the bottom base. Right, and it's perpendicular because we're focusing on right cylinders. So I can show that little box notation to show that it's a right angle right there. Okay, the top and bottom, those two circles, I have two bases, so let me label that. Here's a base, here's a base. Okay, the height of it would be the length of the axis. Right, so I'm looking at that perpendicular segment that connects the two bases. Right, so I know that that is my height. This span from here to here, that measure would be the height of it. And here we have really just one curved lateral face. So this whole part here is the curved lateral face. I could also label a radius. So right here, if I connect the center to any point on the circular base, that would give me a radius. And we know that any one radius will be congruent to any other radius in the same diagram. Okay, over to the right, here I'm giving you a net. So I'm looking at my three-dimensional figure in two dimensions. I'm looking at it flat. So I think the two bases are pretty obvious, right? The two circles are the two bases. And I can draw in a radius right here as well. And then right here is that curved lateral face. So what's nice about seeing it flat as a net is you can see how that lateral face right, wraps around each of the bases. So if I show you with my model here, here is my net. So if I picture my top and bottom bases as flaps that fold in like that, then I can see how this curved lateral face wraps around, wraps around that base right here. I can picture it like, if I'm looking at a can of soup, my lateral face right here, it's like the label of the soup can that again, it has to wrap around the base just like so. So this part then, 
from here to here, right? It's gonna wrap around the base like that. So this part has to be the circumference of the base of the circle. Okay, and then this segment, this perpendicular segment that connects that top base to the bottom base, that is the, the height. Okay, so surface area and volume are just like the prism. The only thing that's different is that we know our base shape, right? It's not any kind of polygon, it's a circle. It has to be a circle. So we start off the same way in general, we know that our surface area will be the lateral area plus two base areas. Okay, but how do we get there? Well, I'm looking at this lateral area as this big rectangular chunk, and I'm multiplying the circumference by the height. So here I can make it more specific as 2 pi r times h. So this part right here is the circumference of the base. And the H, right, that is the height of the cylinder. So again, my lateral area is the circumference of the base times its height. That's this big rectangular chunk right here. Okay, and then I need to add two base areas, and I know my base area it has to be a circle. So two pi r squared. So again, right here, this is my base area. Okay, so my surface area is the circumference times the height of the cylinder plus my two base areas, and my bases have to be perfect circles. Okay, volume, just like the prism, base area times the height. But I can be more specific because my base shape, it's a circle. So I can say pi r squared and then times the height. So that pi r squared, again, that's the base area. And the h is the height of the cylinder. Okay, moving on, a few examples now. All right, so find the surface area and the volume of a right cylinder with a height of six and a radius of nine. So first I'm just gonna lay out my formulas. So my surface area is gonna be my circumference times the height plus my two base areas. And then the volume will be the base area times the height. So my radius, I'm told my radius is nine, I'm gonna plug in a nine for every radius that I see. And my height is six. I'm gonna plug in a six for each H that I see. So two times nine times six, I get 108 pi. Two times nine squared, two times 81 is 162 pi. Okay, these are like terms, so I can combine them and I get 270 pi square inches. Okay, volume, nine squared is 81, 81 times six, and I get 486 pi inches cubed. Okay, next one over here in B, height is 12, diameter is six. So remember what that's saying. It's saying here is your base shape, it's a circle. Your diameter is six, so your radius must then be three. So radius is three feet. 
So now back to our formulas. Surface area is going to be our circumference times the height plus the two base areas and volume base area times the height. Okay, so now here I need to plug in for my radius 3. and my height, 12. Okay, so two times three times 12 is gonna get me 72 pi. Two times three squared, so two times nine, gets me 18 pi. So when I add those together, I get 90 pi square feet. All right, there we go. All right, next up, volume. So volume, I need to do three squared, so nine. Nine times 12 gets me 108 pi, and then my feet cubed. All right, so now doing it from a visual. So find the surface area and volume of each right cylinder. So again, I'm just gonna lay out my formulas. So surface area, circumference times the height, plus my two base areas, and volume, base area times the height. So I'm going to plug in for my radius, the two, and then my height gets the 10. All right, so 2 times 2 times 10 gets me 40 pi. 2 times 2 squared gets me 8 pi. Okay, so I get a total of 48 pi units squared. Right, the units weren't specified, so I was going to say units squared. And then for volume, uh, 2 squared times 10, I get 40 pi units cubed. Okay, and my next one, um, my radius is not super clear, but what I do know is that right here, that's my circumference, and my circumference is 2 pi r. So I'm guessing that most of you can see that, well, the radius has got to be 6, but in case you didn't see that, let me just off to the side, write that the circumference is 2 pi r, right, we know it's 12 pi, so I'm just making an equation in my head, that 2 pi r equals 12 pi, and I'm dividing away the 2 and the pi, which is how I'm getting to that figure of 6. So my radius is 6. Let me slide this up a little bit. So radius is 6. So now I have enough information to solve for surface area and volume. So surface area, right, circumference times the height plus the 2 base areas, and volume is the base area times the height. So I'm plugging in my radius, which is 6, and my height, right here is my height, that segment that connects the two bases, that perpendicular segment that connects the two bases, and that has a measure of 5. So 2 times 6 times 5 gets me 60 pi. 2 times 6 squared, 2 times 36, I get 72 pi. So 132 pi units squared. Okay, volume, 6 squared is 36 times 5 is 180 pi units cubed. All right, let's flip it over. Let's go to the back. So here I'm actually going to skip two problems because I think it's a little redundant. We've done several of these. So I'm going to skip A and I'm going to skip D. So go ahead and put little X's there. We're going to skip those two. Okay, and then I'm going to look at B. So in B, I want to find the height. So my instructions are find the indicated value for a right cylinder radius r, height h, volume v, surface area s. 
So here the instruction is to find the height. We're given the radius, we're given the volume. So if I start by just laying out the volume formula, volume equals base area times the height. So I know that the volume is 288 pi. I'm going to plug that in. I know that the radius is 12. I'm going to plug that in. I'm solving for the height. So now if I just clean this up, right, I have 288 pi equal to 144 pi times the height. So to get the h all by itself, right, it's just an algebra problem, I have to divide each side by 144 pi. Easy enough. My height has to be 2. Okay, for C, find the radius. So here again, we're starting off with the height and volume. We want the radius. So I'm just going to start by laying out my formula. So I know that volume is the base area times the height. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 80 pi for volume and the 16 for the height. So what I need to do now is I want to divide both sides by the 16 and the pi. I want to get the radius all by itself. So I'm dividing that 16 and the pi. So 16 pi over here. So it's going to knock away 1 to 1, 1 to 1, just like so, 1 to 1, like so. So I get 80 divided by 16, that's 5. 5 equals the radius squared. I want to solve by taking the square root of each side. So I'm going to get a radius of plus or minus the square root of 5, but I know that it can only be the positive because it represents a measure. So my radius has to be the square root of 5, whatever units we're dealing with. I'm really only nitpicky about giving me units when we're talking about area or volume. Area must be squared and volume must be cubed. All right, E, find the height. So here we're given the radius, we're given the surface area too. So first we lay out our formula. So we know that our surface area equals the circumference times the height plus the two base areas. So plug in what we know. We know that our surface area is 170 pi. So 170 pi goes here. The radius is 5. So 2 pi times 5 times h plus 2 pi times 5 squared. So clean it up. I have 170 pi equals 10 pi times the height plus 2 times 25, so 50 pi. So now when I look at my three terms, these two have a pi. This one has a pi times h. So these two here are like terms. So I'm going to take away the 50 pi from each side. So I have 120 pi equals 10 pi times the height. So now I'm trying to get the height all by itself. So I can divide each side of my equation by 10 pi. So here we go. Ends up being just 120 divided by 10. So I get a height of 12. 12 units. All right, lastly, find the radius. We know the height. We know the surface area. So again, surface area formula, we're looking at the circumference times the height plus the two base areas. And I'm plugging in a 102 pi for the surface area, and I'm plugging in a 14 for the height. So 2 pi r times 14 plus 2 pi r squared. Clean it up. 102 pi is equal to 28 pi r plus 2 pi r squared. All right, so when I look at each term, 
None of those are like terms. This one has a pi, this one has a pi r, this one has a pi r squared. So when I'm thinking about what to do, one thing that I do recognize is that it's a quadratic equation because I see an r squared. So I'm going to think, well, is there a, a common factor that I could divide out of each term to simplify it? And I see, oh, well, they're all divisible by 2, and they're all divisible by pi. So I'm going to divide out a 2, I'm going to divide out a pi. So then I'm left with 51 is equal to 14r plus r squared. So now that I've divided every term by a 2 pi, I see a quadratic equation. So I need to have it set equal to 0 before I can try to solve it. So I'm going to take away the 51 from each side. So 0 equals r squared plus 14r minus 51. So when I run through my options as to how I can solve it, I would not solve by taking the square root. I have a linear term. Next, I would try to factor it. Can I think of two numbers that multiply to a negative 51 that add to a positive 14? And I do. So I see that that's going to factor into r plus 17 times r minus 3. So my two solutions would be negative 17 or positive 3. And the negative 17, it is not going to work. The only one that works is the positive 3. I can't have a negative measure for my radius. All right, last problem. So here we've got Max. Max decides to carve out a cylinder in a wooden cube. The cube has a side length of 10 centimeters, and the cylinder has a radius of 4 centimeters. What is the surface area of the cube after the cylinder has been carved out? So what I'm trying to visualize is I'm starting with a cube, but then inside of it I have this cylinder that is carved out. It's like drilling a cylinder out of my cube. So I'm just trying to picture what are all of the surfaces that are now exposed, right? I'm picturing this model as a wooden cube with that cylinder drilled out of it. So let's draw it. Let's draw a picture. So I'm going to start by drawing a big cube. I'm going to start by drawing a square like this. Okay, and then I'm going to draw the top. Like this little parallelogram top like that and then here that parallelogram side like that and then I add my dimension to it so I'm adding the background kind of like so and then what I'm picturing is this cylinder cylinder that is drilled out like that okay so again here I'm trying to picture this wooden Here's a cube that has this cylinder drilled out of it. And I'm trying to picture all of the surfaces that are getting exposed. So here, I want to write out my plan. And I'm going to label my, my sides as well. So I know that my cylinder has a radius of 4. So right in here, that radius would be 4. Mark that. Radius is 4. Okay, and then the cube, the cube has a side length of 10. So I have a 10 here, a 10 here, and a 10 here. So I know that if I'm thinking about all of my surfaces, I have to start with my cube, right? So I'm looking at my cube. And then as I'm drilling out, so I started with this perfect cube, perfect cube. And then we are drilling out the cylinder, right? I'm just drilling it out. So I have to remove, I have to remove these two circular bases. So I'm just picturing right here, right? This is one of the two circular bases that is no longer exposed. So I'm going to take out, I'm going to subtract the two circular bases. And then I have to think, well, what else is now exposed? This is, I'm picturing this as a wooden cube. 
right? So I see that I've, I've drilled out the cylinder. So in doing so, I'm removing those circular bases, but I actually have to add back in then that curved lateral area right here of the cylinder. So I have to add back in the lateral area of the cylinder. So my cube, I know that it's six times the side squared. My two circular bases, right, pi r squared, and then the lateral area of the cylinder, right, that's my circumference times the height of it. So when I plug everything in, my cube, all sides, they're all 10. The radius, radius for those circular bases is four. Height of the cylinder is the same as the side of the cube, so 10 right here. So I get 600, that's my cube, 600 square units, square centimeters here. Uh, take away those two circular bases, so I'm taking away the 32 pi right here, but I have to add back that curved lateral face of the cylinder, the lateral area of the cylinder, so I'm adding back an 80 pi. So the only two numbers that I can combine here are these two, because those are my only like terms. So I get 600 from my cube, take away the two circular bases, add back the lateral area of the cylinder, combines to be 48 pi right here. So I get 600 plus 48 pi centimeters squared. All right, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.